Cora, do you feel there is a need to extend competition and choice for people in this country? Absolutely. Everything you do on the high street is about competition, choice, efficiency, and the providers of the service. Mobile phones, cheap airlines, and so on. Healthcare, absolutely no choice. We have a monopoly. That's the NHS. A monopoly insurer and a monopoly provider. And that can't be good. There's no efficiency in that. And what do you feel is the promise of an extension of choice and competition? I think it'll make competitors uh, try and provide better services make patients consumers, welcome consumers, uh, rather than a nuisance. Uh, we'll look after every need, car parking, uh, speed of appointment, speed of access to diagnostics. Those, those groups that do well and provide good services will get the patients. Those that do poorly and are inefficient just won't get, and that's the marketplace. And is that the primary lesson for people to learn when they look longingly at single-payer systems? I think it is. I think single-payer systems look remarkably attractive, efficient. You don't have to keep the costs. But not knowing those costs drives competition out the window and drives consumerism out the window. As a person of science who deals in such a critical specialty of cancer care, what does it do to you personally and professionally when you see people who are denied access to drugs you know can at least prolong their lives? It's, it's heartbreaking, especially if people can't afford to, to buy the drug. And, you know, I, I use tricks to try and get them it, but, uh, you know, often you just can't. And that's really heartbreaking. On the issue of aging, I've seen surveys with doctors who seem convinced that the aging are being shortchanged by the National Health Service. What is your view on that? There's no doubt there's a gradient of access to services that gradually drops as you get older. After the age of 70, unless you ask, you don't get offered. And I think that's the big difference across the Atlantic. Uh, we just don't offer, there's no incentive to offer people services in a state monopoly. So what happens, you ration services by avoiding the discussion of the availability of a treatment to someone that's say, over 70 or over 80. And we see this in cancer care. What should Americans know when they think about single-payer systems, what should they know about the implications when national boards make decisions on such things as treatment and drugs? They'll lose their own choice completely, unless uh, they're willing to top up or unless they have some way of accessing the boards themselves, which they won't have, of course. So they'll basically lose control of their own destiny within the medical system.